Hi, I'm joined today by Stuart Rhodes, manager of the elite rated M&G Global Dividend Fund. Thank you for joining me today, Stuart. Thank you. Stuart, you've been at the fund's helm for more than 10 years now. Over this time frame, what have been your best and worst stock decisions? Well, as you know, we have a diversified portfolio, so we almost don't want one specific stock to be dominating performance or, or detracting from performance for any given sort of time period. We've had many successes over the years. That the ones that come to mind are sort of Broadcom, which was originally called Avago, which really over the time period we've held it now has increased its dividend by 10 times since we bought it. So that's been a phenomenal success. Methnex has been a consistent holding us for many, many years now, and that's contributed an awful lot of performance. And actually, in absolute terms, has, has nearly generated us half a billion pounds of profit now. So that's been some big successes. But like any fund manager, we also have our are um, periods where we don't have much success and we get some companies wrong. Um, you know, we're no different, so we've had some pretty poor investments along the way. One that really sticks to mind is a company called Orica, which is an Australian business that makes mining explosives. Really why this wasn't successful is because we held on to it for too long in the belief that it would turn around. And so probably there were many times where we could have cut that position earlier and actually saved our, our unit holders quite a bit of money. Um, but, you know, over, over the long run, our goal is to make sure we get many more right than we get wrong, but we know we're going to get some wrong from time to time. And over the 10 years, Stuart, has your process changed or altered at all? The philosophy and process really hasn't changed much since we first launched the fund back in 2008. In fact, we often joke that, you know, a lot of the slides that we use in our marketing material are exactly the same slides that we first had when we first started talking about the fund back in 2008. You know, I've probably given that presentation over a thousand times by now, and so some of those slides I've talked to a thousand times. Um, we're big, big believers in what we do, investing in companies that grow, in grow their dividend on a consistent basis every year. We don't think that's a fad or a fashion. We don't think it's going away anytime soon. So we don't really make any apologies for not changing our philosophy and process and just being quite boring. You know, naturally, we've been running the fund for 10 years, so you would expect us to try and evolve and improve what we do. But the actual, mental, the actual fundamental core of what we believe in is exactly the same as what it was in 2008. And where are you seeing the best dividend opportunities at the moment? Well, we see dividend opportunities in, in different parts of the market. Um, so we split our fund up into three sections, which is really quality, which is the more defensive aspect of the market, assets, which is the more cyclical part of the market, and then the growth element. Um, the growth element is the toughest one. So... You know, we saw a lot of opportunity there back in 2016 when there was quite a lot of volatility in the markets, which gave you those entry points into good growth businesses. Volatility has been pretty benign, very benign in 2017, maybe less so in 2018, but still not enough volatility to give you those exciting entry points. So our growth exposure is probably on, on, on the way down. In the other two, we are seeing quite a lot of opportunity. Assets still looks very attractively valued to us, uh, maybe not as quite as attractively valued as it was back in 2016 when we would argue it was ludicrously cheap. Now it's sort of moved up to just being you know, attractively valued or a little bit cheap. So we've still got quite a bit of exposure there. But probably the more recent dynamic has been on the quality side and the defensive side. There was a real loving in that side of the market maybe three, four years ago. The bond proxy sort of argument was really um, catching wind within the markets. People got very, very excited about that. And that really has been falling away pretty significantly now for 18 months. So we're starting to get a little bit more excited, specifically within consumer staples and a bit of healthcare. You know, those two sectors are starting to represent better entry points than they have done for some time. Uh, and so naturally, that's where we're focused on a bit of work. Thank you very much. Thank you.